Welcome to the show, everybody. This week we are interviewing Swedish artist Christopher Zetterstrand, a classically trained oil painter and the man behind the famous paintings featured in hit video game Minecraft. Think of the skull on fire or the hand lighting the match over the table, things like that. Uh, Listen to this episode to learn about his story, his perspective, and how these iconic paintings came to be. We are so proud of this episode, and we hope you enjoy it too. Have fun, and uh, yeah, buckle in. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Boston Art Podcast. Boston's premier art podcast. Where we talk art, culture, and philosophy. My name is Theodore Earthworms. And I am Brian Huntress. Welcome to the show. Okay, great. Yeah, well, first things first, we just want to say, like, thank you so much for agreeing to come on the show. We're honored to have you, and we're really excited to learn about your story and what it is you do. Thank you. Nice to be here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So where do we uh, where do we find you in the world right now? Um, I live in Stockholm, Sweden, um, and um, it's been my home almost forever. But uh, I had my studio here since I graduated um, um, the Royal College here in Stockholm in 2001. And since then, I've uh, had the same studio here in the central Stockholm. Wow. And is the Royal, uh, you said the Royal Academy or the Royal College, is that in Stockholm as well? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's so interesting. And can you tell us maybe a little bit about like your background, like how, what kind of place did you grow up in and and what kind of kid were you? Uh, um, I grew up here in, in Stockholm, but we also moved around uh, quite a lot when I was a kid. So moved around Sweden. Uh, yeah, but not only we, we lived for a brief period in, um, in Denmark. And then, uh, when I was about 12 we uh we lived for a while in um in france so um oh wow we, uh, yeah so first in the south of france and then i uh then we lived in paris so i actually went to school in paris for a while also but uh then we uh, moved back to to sweden so that's basically where i've been most of the time but um um also when i studied at the royal Royal College here in Stockholm. I had a had an opportunity to be an exchange student uh, with the um, Facultad de Bellas Artes in uh, Madrid. Mm. So I uh, lived in Madrid for a while also. That's such an amazing um, experience. I feel like I've I, I I'm I'm jealous. I've actually never left the United States. <laughs> so never. Uh, Across the sea, there's, there's, a, there's a lot to see. <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. a lot, a lot uh, of flat plains of grass. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> here, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Have you ever been to the states? Yeah, three times actually. Uh, oh, very cool. Once, um, uh, just uh, sort of vacationing in mm. New York with uh, my my wife had a uh, some kind of job uh, stuff to do there, so. Uh, I I joined her mm. uh, for a brief time, and then um, yeah, I went to um, uh, I did a I did a talk at the Smithsonian in um, in Washington. Wow, uh, which Smithsonian? Was it an art museum or history? Yeah, the the big museum there. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. What was your talk <laughs> on? That sounds real. That's uh, really cool. I, I was talking about uh, it was a lecture on my work process and my work um so it's actually available to see online i think they have it still oh wonderful um, still up but i was like in 2011 or something I, speaking sure. of which sure. that'd be pretty cool to get into so what what kind of painting do you do exactly are you an acrylic painter do you work in oils <clears throat> um I, I i mean it's it's oil on canvas right i mean when, when i when I write the titles and the dimensions of the piece, and uh, and then I write oil on canvas. But actually, gotcha. uh, but actually, uh, I always start my paintings uh, in uh, in a fast drying medium such as vinyl oh. paint, vinyl paint or acrylics, uh, just to get the basic composition up and stuff. So I, I start with the really loose sketch in 
in thin acrylics and the vinyl mostly uh, mm. and then i and then i and then i continue in oil so that's I'm really interesting it, i've never yeah. heard of somebody using a, a vinyl is it some kind of are you using a medium mixing with the oil paint or is it some kind of vinyl medium no, medium? no it's a it's a I mean, vinyl is a type of plastic which is quite quite different from oh. acrylics. Uh, acrylic paint, I mean, that's a plastic as well, but it's yeah. um, um, the the pigment is uh, distributed in a completely different way compared to vinyl, which is a sort of a I don't know what's it called uh, some kind of submersion uh, thingy. Anyway, the uh, uh, the effect is that vinyl paint is more matte. And it's mm. um, it gets a sp really a, a sp special kind of uh, glow to it, very intense uh, pigmentation and stuff. So that's a good, uh, very good uh, start for me because I, I, um, I very often I want the underpainting to shine through the the oil, and um, and uh, vinyl is perfect for that, and it's also really. I mean, it's like um, I mean, if you buy a prefabricated, uh, um, like gesso, gesso uh, canvas or something. That that's that's a type of paint. That's uh, I mean, vinyl paint is uh, is uh, as good as for for the mm. oil to stick to it. So it's it's a good way to start for me. One thing I think is interesting too about what you're saying is that it seem it seems to me that you have. Uh, a very would you or, or would you say you have like a very classical approach to your painting? Yeah, uh, yeah. So would much. you would you consider it like yeah. a kind of indirect painting or like I guess I'm kind of curious studying at the Royal College of Art in in, uh, in Stockholm. How mm. would you describe the kind of lineage of your technique? Would you say it relates? A lot of artists talk about how their work relates to the old masters or mm. old master uh techniques do you feel like do you feel any relation to to that kind of language or do you feel like you're you know it's like old master style works yeah uh i uh, i'm i'm extremely influenced by old painting techniques mm. and, and any also, specific artists um i mean there's, there's so many but right. um, um i mean uh, i'm a I'm a, I'm, it's so many, I, I, like painters like Giotto, very early Renaissance painting, huh. um, like uh, Piero della Francesca, uh, maybe uh, uh, one artist that I usually, uh, or very often uh, steal from is, but is um, Bellini. It's uh, also, that's also Italian Renaissance. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, but a lot of Dutch, Dutch seventeenth uh, century also. Yeah. Well, you've schooled uh, me. I actually don't know who any of the people you listed are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, you can check check them out. I mean, the, uh, there, there's so there's so there's so much in uh, in uh, in the old history of painting that's, I mean, crazy. Yeah fresh i mean you can uh you, you don't really realize that it's been like five five hundred years or something and seriously they, they, they really look like uh, uh i mean you, you can you of course you can tell that the i mean it's an it's an old painting and it's an ancient style and and stuff but but it's it's it speaks so um in a very contemporary way for me mm -hmm. and um but i mean I remember when I started out painting, I went to actually two two art schools before uh, I went to the Royal College because in Sweden at that time, that, this was in the 90s, um, you couldn't apply. I mean, you could apply to the Royal College, but um, almost nobody got in uh, without uh, quite a serious... Uh, without a serious um, portfolio yeah and you and you needed you actually needed uh in most cases to have gone to a couple of schools before so there was like uh a preparatory painting schools in stockholm like there were like six of them and they they were 
sorted in a strange hierarchical. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so you started at one, uh, one of maybe three, and then you advanced to another school that was like, okay, next step. And mm -hmm. then from there, you had a pretty good chance at get, getting ac accepted at one of the, one of the art colleges in, in Sweden. And, mm -hmm. uh, and there was like maybe four or five, but when I went to these uh, these uh, preparatory art schools, they um, uh, they were very much influenced by modernism and the and the French painting style uh, that evolved from like uh, the late nineteenth century French schools, mm -hmm. and um, and then uh, and then the. The, the French uh, cubism and uh, and all that so it wasn't actually really uh, that common that uh, that students um, studied like the old masters because they were seen as a bit uh, well old mm -hmm. so <laughs> uh, so but uh, but that, that I was really fascinated and wanted to learn the technique so I actually went to I, I realized after a while that if I wanted to learn this, I, I I needed to sort of teach myself by looking at older paintings. So I, I've spent many years at museums around Europe, uh, painting and drawing there. So, oh, so master copies in the galleries and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That's wonderful. It would be interesting too to hear, are there contemporary artists as well that serve as influences for you? Because I know a lot of your visuals incorporate like 8-bit mm. and digital artwork as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of contemporary painters uh, that I find like interesting and mm -hmm. that I really, really like. Uh, it's always harder to mention like contemporary artists because I'm always afraid of, okay, well, why didn't I, I say that one? Or oh, yeah. uh, right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I for, yeah. forgot <laughs> about that one and oh, now, now they're going to hate me. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah um no i get that there's a there's a there's a lot and there's a there's always been a kind of really um living painting tradition in in the uh, in the nordic countries mm. uh even though by during the 90s painting wasn't really in i mean uh mm. i remember when i at my first year at royal college they um uh, I remember one of the senior students asking me, uh, "Well, wh why are you why are you still painting? I mean, you got accepted already here, so now you can do whatever you want." <laughs> um, because at the time, um, there was an emphasis on on um, like uh, more um, like uh, conceptual art and, and right and, and, things and, like and, installations and, and, and yeah exactly and I I've I've got no no beef with that but uh, that wasn't my thing I, I mean I, yeah. I really wanted to learn to paint so I was uh, actually a bit disappointed that that there was no real schooling uh, mm -hmm. at the at the Royal College but uh, it uh, it was fine anyway I mean it's, it, I I considered it a five year grant. <laughs> like uh, I got my studio at the school and I can do pretty much what I want and I wanted to paint so yeah. mm. that's interesting that's actually a sentiment we've um, spoken with a few artists about that in the last maybe a few decades um, arts education had such a slant towards contemporary that it was mm. a little bit shocking for folks that didn't fall in that wheelhouse yeah maybe yeah that's something um, a lot of people share but, living but, through but, that era exactly but um but after I, I remember, after that period, at least here in Sweden, there was kind of a backlash, and uh, and uh, and painting become became like interesting again uh, mm. by the contemporary art scene. They they considered it, uh, you know, no, it's fine again. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, all the painters, they, they um, I mean, they had just kept going and mm -hmm. paint so right they were there the whole time that's yeah, an interesting exactly. 
segue, I, I, I'm curious to uh, know, how would you describe the, uh, this is a definitely a very broad question, so feel free to answer it however you want, but how would you describe the community of uh, artists in, in Stockholm? Like, is there a lot of very active galleries or a lot of mm. like, are people, are there a lot of artists working in doing studio practices through public grants? Or is there like, how would you describe the, uh, I'm sure it's very diverse, but how would you describe the the Stockholm or overall Sweden artist community working, you know, at the, at the professional level? Yeah, that's a, that's a, it's difficult to answer uh, briefly, uh, but uh, oh, I believe it. Uh, but since there's um, there's there's quite a few uh, like uh, colleges of art in 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 Sweden, and uh, I don't know how many get uh, you know, they they push out every year, but but uh, after after a while. Um, uh, some turn to other stuff, and there's, uh, and then there's uh, people that uh, get accepted to galleries. And in in this, in Stockholm, there's quite a rich and uh, and uh, lively gallery scene. Uh, mm-hmm. They've had their ups and downs, and and uh, I know the the COVID uh, situation uh, broke a few of them. Oh, I believe uh, it. Yeah. So, but um, since I mean Stockholm is a pretty, I mean, by by most international standards, I mean it's a it's a small city. Uh, mm. I mean it's the capital of Sweden, but I don't know how many. It's like one and a half million or something. Yeah. Wow. So, um, and the art scene is, I mean it's it's it's. Uh, it's alive, but it isn't huge. So you pretty much, if you if you go regularly to the uh, openings and uh, and you, I mean, you've been perhaps in, you went to the art schools, and so you know people. It's it's a it's kind of a everybody knows everybody more or less, mm-hmm. uh, at least um, among the people that, that's been doing doing it for a while. So. But um, no, I, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, I'm <laughs> trying to think of. Uh, um, well, uh, to give an example, I know something that we because it is really hard to describe the hmm. scene for whole city, <laughs> right, right, but right. I know something that we notice a lot with the Boston scene here hmm. is, um, to generalize, a lot of galleries tend to be more leaning towards um, abstract expressionism. There's a big mm-hmm, corporate mm-hmm. arts market. Um, it's kind of a more conservative place. Like you don't see a lot of things like performance art. There's less uh, drama. Um, okay. Most of the pieces here are, uh, there's a lot of painting, I would say, more than sculpture. Like there's yeah. just certain trends that we've observed over time. So it's interesting yeah. to compare between cities because we have mm. New York right up the way, a few hours down that exactly, very yeah. different. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, there's a there's there's a bit of everything here. Um, um, and I feel that uh, um, right now, at least, there's no there's no uh, really extreme trend towards one thing or another. So, mm. um, so it's pretty uh, pretty uh, inclusive. Um, and there are galleries that uh, that specialize in, in sort of like some one, one way of painting perhaps or a style you you can recognize the artists from that gallery and then there's more more like internationally mm. uh, known swedish galleries that are i mean there's a there's a hierarchy among the galleries as well mm. uh, but we also have um um uh, the the Swedish government uh, has uh, supports the arts pretty mm. well, so That's we uh, so there's a there's there's quite a few institutions that are that, that are government funded that wouldn't exist if mm. uh, if it was purely uh, they had to do you know manage by themselves, right? 
So one thing too that I, I want to get into, kind of the elephant in the room, is that you your imagery, whether people know it or not, is some of the is is attached to literally the the highest selling video game like ever. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like like children, uh yeah. adults, like every like it, it, I don't know if it's the same in, in Sweden, but in American culture, like every everybody plays minecraft yeah, or has a child way. that plays yeah. minecraft <laughs> like yeah, it's, it's, it's it's incredibly popular here as well so, right and yeah. that's a, and and like i'm just i'm curious to know like you like i i guess your your story with with minecraft or how your images your paintings became associated with the game i mean it's it seemed i from my brief research it's mm -hmm. uh, i learned that you got involved in 2010 i believe yeah i think so yeah how did I guess I'm curious, like, how did you get that call? Like, were you friends with or involved in the in the in the development of the game? Like, how did how did a artist, uh, you know, a classical classically trained painter <laughs> from the Royal Academy in Sweden end up, yeah. you know, associated with this game? Well, it, it was uh, just chance. Uh, I, I mean, uh, Marcus, uh, who uh, who made the game. Mm -hmm. uh, Marcus Paschal. Is this the uh, guy known as Notch? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Uh, he um, he uh, he was together with my sister. Oh. So so they, so they live together. Wow. And uh, and uh, they had an apartment pretty close to where where uh, my family lives. Oh, so, in Sweden. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, in the suburb of south of Stockholm. Uh, and uh, so I mean, we were good friends, and we have known each other for yeah for a couple of years, and they, they had been together for a couple of years, and um, and he, he I mean, it, that wasn't the first game he showed me. I, I remember um, when I went to visit them sometimes, he he would be you know, programming something. I I. I'm, I'm, I don't know <laughs> how, <laughs> I, how, how they do it, but he's a Neither wizard. Neither do we. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's great, crazy. But anyway, one day he showed me this, uh, uh, like an early uh, test for the, like, uh, for the, for the game. And, um, and then it uh, evolved and I would see newer, newer stuff. And I, 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 I don't remember exactly how, but, but I, uh, I think we just we were talking uh, about uh, he he was talking about adding furniture I think furniture and uh, and stuff and he said that uh, and then I might do like if you combine sticks and wool it could become paintings maybe you should can I you know could we sh shrink some of your paintings and, oh uh -huh. he he said I have this idea if we take some of the the sticks and wool in the game. Mm, yeah, because th that's that's the the correct the crafting the I, I Yeah, gotcha. exactly. Uh, so you could do like you could you could combine stuff, and it would be an axe, or it would be a yeah, you know, anything. So uh, and he was like, uh, well, and then we can do a share and painting and a like, a, yeah. So I I I took a couple of I think a sort of like twenty paintings, and uh, and then I um, pixelated them. I mean, they, they they were. I mean, I took photos of. Uh, I I mean, I always document my paintings, of course, and and uh, so I had had mm -hmm. a lot of. So I sh shows a few and uh, sent them over to him, and next time over they were in the game. But that, that I mean, this was before it was really popular. Mm -hmm. um, How did you choose the paintings? Were they just you just said you were they just current works in your portfolio, or did you? Do a few designs where you said, "Oh, I think these would look really great in this game." Or how did that process mm. look? Yeah, I I remember. I I mean, I, I sorted through paintings that I you know, and I was thinking about well, uh, what would what would be uh, what would fit in the game? I I couldn't uh, choose really too strange stuff. Right, uh, maybe, and maybe not like too violent, or I, you know, I, yeah, I, I remember sense. I was just like, uh, uh, this will, this is fine, this is this will do, and then, <laughs> and then also, in quite a few of them, I actually cropped out, like, uh, 
like details from the paintings or may or at least oh, smaller wow. portions of the painting and then pixelated them and oh. after after pixelation i also had to go over them with um like uh, uh adjust the pixels because uh, uh the, to make it look good and right in some Additional in some rendering. case yeah and in in some cases i i changed the stuff and i thought it would be fun to maybe add something from from the from minecraft mm. uh, into the painting so i i remember i added a i think it was a pig's head into a painting and a creeper <laughs> head and a, i know so i uh i added pieces of minecraft in, in some of the pixel paintings also and then and then it uh, yeah it took off but uh and i think it was a, a year later or something or maybe two when um there was some kind of um there was some kind of competition uh for uh there was a computer uh company here in stockholm together with uh, mojang the, the company that makes minecraft they had some kind of competition and they their idea was that one of the uh, the first prize would be a paint one of my paintings so they actually commissioned me to do one more painting for minecraft hmm. um and so then i made the most famous painting in minecraft the, the skull on fire or the burning skull oh. Oh wow! That, uh, that so was that, this, created after my after the uh, oh, and yeah. it was added late. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So that that was the last one. Oh, I mean the only one then that we mm. added here. Uh, How funny that that's like the most iconic one too. Yeah, yeah. But I think that I, uh, by then I had time to think a bit, and I was <laughs> like, yeah, uh, okay. Many of the main many of the paintings we added like for just for fun and and. And they were like unrecognizable from the original painting, not mm. only because they were so small, but uh, there was room for some more larger paintings uh, and larger in this case, it's like 64 by 64 pixels. So not that huge, but right. um, uh, so I, I'm then I, I wanted to do something really uh, something that would be not vis visually too complicated so mm. so and then it yeah it was a skull and then pixelated fire I'm and one thing too. and one thing i mean with uh, quite a few of them mm. uh paintings is that i mean they were all oil paintings mm. but many of them actually de depicted pixelated 2d stuff in a 3d environment so quite a few of the pixel paintings were, uh, I mean, they were paintings of pixels. And then I photographed the painting of pixels and then I turned them into pixels. So some of the, oh, wow. so some of the pixelated uh, objects in the paintings were kind of, kind of confusing, but they, they got to pixels again. <laughs> that's yeah. a fun process mm, yeah. that's interesting i'm curious too to back up just a little bit um was the use of pixel art in your painting something you were doing before the affiliation with this project or was it sort of a yeah, contribution yeah. to your style no that, that i had done that for many years okay um and i uh, because i was i was really um i really loved the old school Mm -hmm. a pixelated uh, um, images that the, that were in the early computer games because I found it quite quite fascinating that they could uh, even though it was the I, I don't remember how large the screens were back in like late 80s but you didn't have a lot of pixels to work with and you certainly didn't have much color I mean, we mm -hmm. had EGA, I think there was 16 colors. And then it was like 32, super EGA and, and stuff. And VGA was like 250. Uh, I don't remember. Anyway, mm -hmm. the uh, w one thing that I found so fascinating with the early computer games was how much ingenuity and, uh, and uh, creativity 
uh, they had to bring to bring bring to the table to to mm-hmm. be able to make interesting games with mm-hmm. that kind of limitations and and i th- i think that often often when you have limitations that's that's when you really can uh be creative um so um so i, I wanted to see if my like uh, really old uh, fashioned in a sense painting style how how it would look uh a very a very classical oil on canvas technique but mm-hmm. implementing something that is restricted in color and and ultimately extremely flat one of the central ideas in in the modernism uh at least uh as as uh, as implemented by the the French in the like nineteen nineteen twenties forties thirties was uh, that the paintings should um, should not try to hide um, their um, their flatness and mm-hmm. uh, and so and so so painters would uh, exaggerate or at least not try to hide uh, the flatness of the painting. And uh, and the old, I mean, if you look at paintings from, say, the middle 19th century, uh, and the old tradition is that you actually, when you paint, you actually try to mimic a 3D world. Say you paint a still life or a, or a portrait. Um, the old school, of course, wanted to make it real. They wanted to make a 3D space. Mm. But I wanted to see what would happen if I I continued in the old style of painting a 3D world. But if I if I contrasted that with really flat objects, uh, what would happen? I and what I found was that um, um, the 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 flatness of the of the like. In in this case, pixels, or I, I used other stuff as well, like uh, clip art and uh, and drawings. Uh, but I mount, I I, I place them in the three D world, and uh, and their flatness exaggerated the three D space. So actually, the paintings became more uh, more filled with volume and uh, uh, and an illusory sense of space in the in the in the paintings, and I. I found that quite fascinating. I had yeah, that's for, so interesting. The, yeah. the contrast between the, the flatness and the three dimensional qualities of the paint. Yeah, um, it emphasized so, each other. Exactly, and uh, and by then I had also started to um, to uh, make my motifs in three uh, D programs. So I um, uh, I would construct sort of virtual still lives. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I used like a 3D software called Maya mm. and then, uh, and various other, uh, Hey, before we get into that part, yeah. so the, our only problem here, we actually, uh, only have zoom basic. So mm-hmm. it, uh, so it ends our meetings after like 30 minutes or something. Yeah, Is yeah. it okay with you we if we pause restart. for like two minutes and I start a new meeting and send you the link to yeah. that? Sure. Okay. Sure. Awesome. I just want to say too, this has been absolutely amazing so far. So we'll pick up where we left off in a second. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. I'll uh see the link right now. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Ah, oh, there I we go. Had, I, I had to press. <laughs> uh, I had to press. Got it. <laughs> gotcha. Classic. <laughs> okay. Classic Zoom. I'm back with a cup of coffee. So perfect. Oh, amazing. excellent. We got our coffee as well. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with us on that. Yeah. The limitations. No, so no you worries. were just talking. I, I'm about... not. I'm not. I'm not in a hurry anywhere. So. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. yeah, we were curious too about your your schedule. So you are you working mm-hmm. like five days a week in the studio? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And are you, what kind? Of, like, I'm actually really curious about this because I really love people's like, uh, st- work styles and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. what is your studio like? Are you in a warehouse or is no. it like something like that? No, it's uh, it's like uh. It's not. It's not exactly a basement because we, I do have windows, but it's like gotcha. uh, half half a floor down, 
and it's it's kind of it's not big uh, i actually uh, i have three rooms but i i i rent rent out two of them so mm-hmm. um so uh, but uh, i have a have a decent sized room and um and uh, it's sort of divided into two parts one is where i'm sitting now in front of the computer and this is where i i do my uh, sketching on in 3d Mm. Uh, because that's how I make my motives for for painting. So often I'll be sitting here for, uh, by the computer for a couple of weeks, making uh, making scenes. I mean, it's mm. uh, it's like um, um, I think of them a bit like if the virtual stages, like uh, uh, sceneries, like on a in a theater or something, and then I. And my uh, the different image parts are like uh, the the set design and the and the actors, and then I move them mm-hmm. about and rearrange the lighting, and I do you know. And in the end, it's um, I have something that I find interesting to paint, and then I move over to my the other part of my studio where I'm where it's more like a classic painting painting studio with brushes and paint and and an easel and stuff and so you had said it's a 3d it's a digital program right for the 3d mapping yeah yeah could you tell us about that process a little bit are you so are you making digital renderings of these specific also don't i it seems that there's a dog barking directly outside my window sorry if you can hear that (laughs) i I um, didn't hear it no gotcha (laughs) um so I'm, i'm curious so are you making digital renderings of your subject matter and your ideas mm. and your concepts yeah. and then you're using these to create uh your your oil paintings yeah that's such a I've, that's a really cool process could you tell us about how how this like maybe like from beginning to sure to, sure. to easel yeah uh, usually it's it starts with um uh, uh, sometimes i have a basic idea of some kind of scene that I want to build. Uh, but uh, quite most of the time, I actually don't know what I'm what I'm going to do. I, I, I sit down and I start uh, building something in the 3D program. Right now, I'm using uh, Blender, which is a free 3D oh. um, program, uh, which is really good. And um, and uh, m- many times I actually start by recreating uh, a painting by someone else, like uh, mm. Bellini or Piero della Francesca, or uh, quite often it's um, it's Renaissance or uh, painting because they 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 invented the central perspective. Which oh. you know the the idea that you can drag you can draw lines towards the horizon, and it will aid you in uh, in uh, in depicting uh, buildings, and uh, mm-hmm. you can you can you can place uh, people in perspective and and such, and uh, that's I mean that is a construction that they came up with in the, like fifteenth uh, uh, century and. Uh, but we're so used to it now that we don't uh, we don't think about it. I mean, mm-hmm. or our, I mean, our our modern life is so filled with images that are uh, we, we we take it for granted. And uh, mm-hmm. also, the three D software is uh, is based on that idea. Um, so, so if you put one of these so, master paintings into the three D program, could you yeah. rotate it and see it from another perspective? Yeah, when I'm when I'm when I'm done with the reconstruction. That's so, so interesting. That must be yeah. Fun. So so I so I uh, I I try to recreate the ar- the architecture. Sometimes I mean it's really basic. It may be a, a wall or two and a, and an archway and a, like. Uh, recently, I've been doing a lot of. Uh, I started with uh, paintings from uh, uh, a Dutch, like seventeenth uh, century, like. Mm. A painter called Peter de Hoog, uh, really, really nice. Uh, uh, you may know Vermeer. 
is more mm -hmm. more well known, but it's it's similar. Anyway, they're, they're quite easy to to uh, to re recreate, and and then uh, and then I just continue. Uh, re I remove stuff that. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't want to do an exact copy of some old some old painting, but I I want something to start with, and I mm. so I I sometimes do a perfect recreation. It looks exactly like uh, like the original painting, and then I start removing stuff. And sometimes it's only a few pieces of the original left, but now it's a three D scene that I can rotate and I can add, you know, lighting. I can uh, I can. I can make a landscape in the background. I can adjust the weather. I can, you know, wow. put the, put the sunset in the in the in the distance and watch how shadows fall. Uh, if I mean on 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 a painting five hundred years old, <laughs> if the sun would have been in another place, you know, it's it's really interesting. So that 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 uh, that uh, stirs up my imagination, and then I start. Uh, you know just keep keep building and mm -hmm. and see if i get any uh you know if if it turns out well then i uh and i find it interesting and i'm like uh, oh i want to paint this and then i'm and then i know i'm finished with the motif but then mm -hmm. that's this is only like it's like uh it's like if you're um say you're a still life painter and you uh you have a table and then you uh, think what I'm, what what I'm gonna paint today? I I'll add a, a like a say a brown picture. Uh, I'll uh, add a, a wine glass and then a couple of apples. And oh, this looks interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll paint that. Um, I do the same, but in three D. That that's that, that's a basic explanation. But then after that, uh, the the fun part for me. At, least uh, or the most fun part is is translating this image uh, to to paint to mm. to, uh, to make it a painting because even though it's a kind of a I mean it's an interesting image but it's totally flat and it looks like a computer I mean it, since it was made in a computer it looks like a computer made it <laughs> and it, it's uh and I don't like that kind of I mean I'm not that interested in that kind of imagery Mm -hmm. uh, so I need to make a physical painting because that's that's where I come from. Yeah. I need to I, I need to paint. Uh, so then I have to translate all the forms and the colors and the and I can exaggerate and improvise uh, on this motif. So so then I then I paint and then it becomes a painting in the end. And um, yeah, that's how it works. That sounds like such an interesting challenge, converting it from mm. this digital image to something like tangible on canvas like that. Um, and it must yeah. be a wonderful reference, too, if you can control your light source and um, the perspective and everything like that. Yeah. It sounds like yeah. having a model in a studio. Exactly. And uh, and and I mean, I. And and these uh, these sort of virtual worlds or virtual still lives, they I can re revisit them. So. Mm -hmm. So like I can I can I can browse my folder for like uh, uh, two thousand and eight and go back and open up old scenes and like oh I made a painting oh, wow. of this oh, and then I and then I maybe you know, turn off a light and rotate the scene a bit and like oh I should have painted this instead this looked much cooler uh, whatever yeah. and and um, so I have hundreds of uh, small worlds in the in my computer that that was the birthplace of the paintings it, it, it kind of fun yeah it's really cool because that's such an innovative way out of a very familiar problem with that a lot of people run into mm -hmm. when they're painting from photographs i've heard a lot of people kind of uh lament almost when they're painting from photographs they say like oh like it's frustrating because i can only uh, yeah. see one perspective exactly. one lighting yeah. it's the camera has flattened all everything and you yeah. have to kind of invent yeah. the perspectives but Excellent. yeah yeah, yeah but with this it's like and, and something else that's so interesting about that too is that you know you look at like you know these these old and beautiful paintings and like 
you might wish that you could just go there and and paint these buildings as they were and these people yeah. as they were but yeah. you you're innovating this this way of of literally doing that obviously with limitations but i'm sure. i'm sure but 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 yeah it's it's like you say it's uh it, it it's it starts with a feeling of like appreciation of or almost love of the old painting and you and you said like you said you want to go there you want to be there mm. and if you if you create it you recreate it you can step inside it in a way uh and of course it's not like like your but in your in your imagination you can play with the idea that you're you're sort of inside uh the painting mm. and 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 the, the process of recreating a painting in 3D also demands of you that you get to know the the original artwork quite well and that's also uh really i mean it's nice it's interesting because mm. you really get to look at at the at the painting and if you take a look at the, the paintings like the paintings that i've made and the, you you won't really see like oh there's a that's the that that's a recreation of an old painting some are quite like uh, yeah you can you can tell maybe or or if you're v well versed in art history you might recognize a few things but like i said it's just it's it's often it's a starting point and not mm. uh, not uh, it's not my intention to 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 m m r like make a painting uh, look like an old painting mm -hmm. even though I use the same technique uh, uh, when it comes to the physical aspect have you ever run into something where like if you're using this program it must sort of be a test sometimes of the perspective and composition as well have you ever run into a situation where you're doing a master copy like that mm -hmm. to build that framework to paint from and realize that something was not compositionally accurate or um, perspective yeah. uh, perspective wise I guess <laughs> yeah 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 uh, uh that that's why it's uh uh it's uh that's why i often use paintings from a cert from certain periods mm. uh where they actually constructed their paintings uh methodically according mm. to the uh the idea of the central perspective because that's much easier and they and um but but many artists uh, didn't uh, i mean they, they might have started out in a part of the painting with the central perspective and then they just you know <laughs> improvised and you know made something else yeah. so in quite a few uh quite a few times i've 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 uh, tried to fit all this uh, uh architecture into uh, and mimic the, the painting and just realizing it's to totally impossible <laughs> the, the, the the scene could never have looked like this and yeah. uh, uh, it, it's just absurd. And when I rotate it, uh, it, it looks really, really weird. But interesting, <laughs> interesting. Uh, like uh, I remember trying to do um, uh, a scene. I started out with an Albrecht Dürer, uh, German uh, uh, 15th century, mm -hmm. uh, the 16th century. Um, and it was totally messed up, but <laughs> it, it it got really interesting, and uh, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking that must be. It sounds like it's probably frustrating once you're halfway through and realize that, but it must be really educational. No, no, not really, because I, I my intention isn't really to make something perfect. Hmm. I, I I I welcome the errors. I welcome the the chaos that is mm -hmm. inherently. Uh, you know bound up with the process and also by sort of limiting myself to these to the rules that you you, you need to adhere to to be able to use the program mm -hmm. or the or, or or this method uh i find that uh it like i like i mentioned with the early computer games and pixels and the limited palette uh, it actually frees me up, huh. uh, and and uh, and and 
make me look at stuff in a for me at least a creative way mm -hmm. yeah to meet that challenge of the um, format yeah so hmm. it's um yeah do you teach at all no not now i uh, i was a teacher for a couple of years at the at the at an art school in stockholm and that was fun uh but uh, i don't teach right now no mm. and your main work as an artist are you like mainly operating like like are you i'm curious like I, I don't know like are you mostly focused on like selling your paintings or or something like that or um... uh, yeah i mean um um the, my mo most of my time is uh is is me in the studio making paintings and mm. And uh, and now and then I have an exhibition and uh, and if, hmm. and, uh, and then I sell paintings. But I also I also do uh, um, some pub public commissions, mm. like for buildings and uh, schools. And uh, um, so I made like uh, maybe a 10, 10 13, uh, uh, quite large. Um, uh, mosaics uh, oh, wow. oh, mosaic. mosa t yeah t tile mosaics uh, where i um in most cases i i use the tiles as pixels so they're they're very large pixel paintings you could say uh i have one that's uh uh, uh at the a big uh, um what's it called uh it's a it's a par outside of a uh, parking house at the at the new uh, hospital here in Stockholm. Oh, oh it's yeah. like and it's um it's eighty meters or hundred meters or so. So it's huge. Oh wow! Yeah, that's incredible. What a feat. Um, yeah, I asked that question because like we interview a lot of uh, as a lot of people say, I guess here maybe they use a similar expression. You know, a lot of people call themselves working artists where, you know, they're either maybe they're teaching kids how to make mm -hmm. art or maybe they're professors or they operate specifically, you know, you know, applying for grants and this and that or yeah. or they're just or they're doing it in an entrepreneurial way where they're mostly focused on sales and, and marketing mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, we're always curious to see here people's like experience with a. Uh, you know, they're, I don't know, like, I don't know how to put it, like, you know, their experience, but just trying to survive, you know, and, and yeah. hack it, yeah. you know, and, and make it, you know, through their day to day as, as an artist and stuff. So it's really, it's really interesting. I guess it's hard to kind of frame up the right question, though, because we technically are in two literal, literally two different economies. Yeah. So yeah. I don't <laughs> fully understand, like, how to ask some, some questions, because maybe it is different. Or maybe it isn't. Maybe it isn't all that different. I don't know. The, I, I don't know exactly what, what what the difference is. Uh, mm. But I, I think it's it must be quite similar. I mean, uh, mm. you, I mean, I I need to sell. I need to sell paintings. Uh, mm. um, and sometimes um, uh, a long a long time passes uh, between sales and then. Uh, <laughs> oh the, yeah, yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, but these uh, public commissions are are uh, are a helpful addition to the mm. um, to the economy mm. here. And um, um, so, I mean, I, I mean, I, I I do my paintings, and uh, I, I'm quite poor actually at at the sales part of it. And I'm I, gotcha. I should I, I should be more. I mean, if if I was really good at this profession, I would uh, I would be I would I would be more uh, more social and go to more openings and sure. uh, and shake a few uh, more hands and uh, <laughs> like uh, um, so I, I'm 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 actually quite poor at the at the sales part of it. I, I don't know. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, d different personalities have. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. have have different uh like uh, facilities when it comes to that that sort of stuff and uh, 
I'm 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 more of a recluse uh, here, sitting in my studio all day. <laughs> gotcha. And I mean, that's that's the way. That's the best way for it to be when you're an artist to just be able to be in your studio and to make make your work. You know, mm. something I'm yeah, curious I mean, about too. That's yeah. might be kind of an I don't know. If this is an odd question, but like in terms of like intellectual property or like mm-hmm. copyright and stuff, like you know, and talking about marketing yourself or something like that, like. You know, do you like, are you, would you be able to like sell prints like uh, or posters of like, like the Minecraft stuff? Like, have you ever tried, like, did you ever like try to kind of, I don't know, like ride that wave or was that kind of a weird situation with like Minecraft or Mojang I mean, owning, the, yeah, owning the paintings or something? No, they, I mean, they, they, they didn't own the paintings and I mean, even I didn't own the paintings because they were hmm. sold a long time ago, all of them, oh. uh, or, or at least most of them. So, oh, I mean, to that, like a, just a private collector or patron. I mean, of yours. I, mean they, I, I show paintings gotcha. uh, f- from my painting history, like the last couple oh. of years, mostly uh, at that time. And, uh, and then I made the Minecraft pixelated versions of them. And, mm-hmm. but, but I didn't still have the paintings. I mean, I think one or two, maybe I, I still had. Uh, but uh, but most see. of them were like you know sold a long time ago, uh, and uh, the only one that uh, that was made for Minecraft was the Skull on Fire, and that was the first prize in a competition. So that wound mm-hmm. up with a winner of a, of a, of the of the competition. But um, so uh, I mean, uh, I, I do sell prints of my paintings, and that includes, mm-hmm. of course, the 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 paintings that was the that was the foundation for the painting pixel paintings in Minecraft, right? Mm. But but I I can't sell the pixel, uh, pixelated versions because that's uh, Mojang owns that. But oh, I can but but, okay. but 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 I can but, but I can uh, I can sell uh, a, a sort of the originals, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, I still have copyright for all all my paintings. Wow. That must have been such an exciting surprise for the collectors of those pieces when they showed up in Minecraft years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, I mean, it must have, must have happened that, you know, a, a kid somewhere in Sweden or Denmark or Germany looks up <laughs> from their computer and was like, Mom, isn't that... Isn't that- isn't that that painting that's on the wall there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Wow. Yeah, it's funny. Also, do you do you have uh, children yourself? Yep. Yeah. I... Do they play Minecraft? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. Now, now, now they're getting a, a bit uh, a, a bit older. And uh, gotcha. My my uh, my son is ten years old, so he, he's still playing. But my mm-hmm. uh, right. my daughter is uh, grown up now, so she's, right. uh, he's past <laughs> the uh, Minecraft stage. Gotcha. Did they already know when they were playing it that your paintings were in it, or was there a moment of realization for them too? Uh, no, they 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 knew. I mean, <laughs> they they at least my uh, my my daughter she grew, she grew up. Uh, I mean, while mm. with the game being made. I mean, right. oh yeah, you know. So so she would look at like, oh, when is gonna be released? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so she she would she would play. Uh, Minecraft before Minecraft was released. Oh wow. That's, that's cool. unreal. What a yeah. what a cool like no like yeah. yeah, that would be such a cool thing to share as like an icebreaker <laughs> or something. Yeah. Like I played Minecraft I... beta. Exactly. Before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's funny. I, I mean, I, I I was the first uh uh when uh, when Marcus tried uh, to implement like uh um uh, the f- feature of like uh, that you could join someone else's server and you could be more than one player. Mm. I remember that moment because I tried to connect from my from like I was on vacation somewhere and I connected through a laptop and I was like, oh, it worked. And then we would walk around in the same <laughs> in the same world. And that was the f- like one of the first times we tried that. <laughs> it was wow. That's unreal. It was like the beginning. That's like, it's so crazy. Yeah, because, because, it, because in the, in the, in the beginning it was, it was like a one player. Yeah. Game. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's a life changing moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is, like, did you have like any, like, like, I mean, cause you probably, you know, you're, you're in like this very active full-time artist and your friend or, yeah. you know, is, is probably this, 
very creative and prolific you know computer guy making games yeah. and stuff but yeah so you guys probably had a creative relationship to begin with but did you feel like like was there any reason to believe that you guys were doing some like messing around with a project that would become like legendary like, <laughs> did you no i mean i i remember the first time he uh he showed me uh like the pixelated hand coming up in front of the screen and banging on like a rock or something and when he had knocked like 10 times the rock broke mm. and uh and he said well th this is uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if if we could if i could uh, like uh, you know do some kind of mining game and i was like this is really interesting this is really i mean mm -hmm. I, I felt that uh, he had he really had something there uh and after a while when he when he continued to improve it it was like yeah this is really good but uh, of course we i mean there was no no way of knowing yeah like, like I, it's it's absurd you know <laughs> level of popularity oh that's so fun mm. that must have been a really exciting project to be a part of and to be yeah i, I mean i directly I, I, I must uh i mean i i was i had very little I mean, I I uh, I did the paintings, nothing else, mm. and uh, right. I wasn't involved in decision making or anything. I mean, <laughs> this was a solo project uh, that yeah. uh, not not uh, Marcus uh, did, and uh, and I was I was just uh, in the peripheral. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and I mean that's like the you know that's the way it is for so many artist communities. It's just like you know you're just part of these these groups and friend groups and your friends are just like making these like amazing things so yeah it's fun to be a part of right yeah, like, yeah 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 <laughs> and then to tie it in too because um what kind of work are you doing right now do you have a series that you're working on that's something that you're passionate about yeah. at the moment yeah i have a i've just uh i just had a like a couple of months of sketching in the computer mm. uh, i tried to do uh you know, uh, a group of motifs at the same, like in, in succession, so that when I start painting, I can do that for quite a while without mm -hmm. having to return to the computer and, and make a new idea. So I have, right now I have like maybe nine, nine paintings that are in only, still only in uh, in 3D, uh, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sort of finished with them uh, conceptually. And yeah. uh, so so now I'm, i have started to 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 paint them and uh, uh is that a difficult transition going from such a long time doing the digital to the painting like working it's in a, seasons it's, that way uh, it, it's a it's a it's a relief <laughs> 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 because because I, I i i i can finally like uh I can I can I can start building on on the idea like it was meant to like uh, sometimes I do stuff in 3D mm. uh, knowing that it looks awful in 3D <laughs> uh, but I know that when I paint it uh, I can I can I can make it work so mm -hmm. so so right now is uh, the most fun time when I when I actually have a, a long period of uh, of uh, concentrated painting ahead of me and uh, I have a I have an exhibition at the at the at the in a con Konsthall, uh, mm -hmm. in uh, in February, so I have to paint quite uh, <laughs> quite a lot now because yeah. I, only, I only have three paintings finished and I need a, a couple more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, it's funny. This just reminded me of I had a professor years ago whose husband would um, he was a wood carver as mm -hmm. his primary artistic uh, training. And but yeah. he was mo also an oil painter and mm -hmm. I, he would make wood, small wood sculptures like dioramas yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And he was actually used, doing a similar thing where yeah. he was he was he's much older than than all of us. Um, He's passed away now, but he would make wood sculptures for as as uh his references for his still life paintings yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and uh there, there were like painters back in like the 18th century that uh for example nicolas poussin the french painter mm -hmm. 
who uh, who would make these small clay figures and stuff and make a sort of a diorama, uh, a small scene uh, that uh, that he, he would use. So the idea isn't new, uh, uh -huh. and uh, and uh, I, I see I see a few contemporary painters that also build their own like scenes methodically and uh, like miniatures and stuff. Mm, and, uh, yeah. Um, but I haven't seen anybody else yet doing it in 3D. Uh, I, I'm sure there are uh, certainly people mm -hmm. out there doing it, but I, I haven't uh, I haven't encountered them yet. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and and who could say? I mean, I actually actually as a, another interesting thing I'm curious about is, do you publish or show the these renderings, these digital renderings, ever like as any kind of behind the scenes? The, uh, publications or things with your work like you know I'm obviously you display your paintings and those mm. are the the main point but do you ever give people like a kind of look behind the curtain a little bit with some of these yeah <laughs> the it, digital yeah, sketches in a, it, 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 in a limited way yeah yeah sometimes when I get to, like a like a maybe a a journalist come to the studio and do an interview mm. or something I I you know I, I'll show them a sneak peek of my 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 sketching process and and show a bit of how it uh, how it looks behind the scenes and yeah it, there have been also moment i mean uh, uh times where i've shown maybe a little bit of uh, of the of the background paintings and actually for my new show now in february i'm i'm going to do a video showing the uh parts of the paint uh, of the creation process because uh I I've actually had that question asked a lot. Like we want to mm. see, and and you can, <laughs> could you please like show us because it looks so cool. And why don't you show this? And I mean, yeah. but the the point for me has been like, um, the, I mean, this isn't this isn't uh, what I do. This I mean, this isn't my product. <laughs> this this yeah. is just uh, my uh, work process. Mm -hmm. And sure, I can I can I can show it, and I and I realize. For some people, it is fascinating because it is fascinating to, to me. Uh, so I'm going to open up a bit and be more generous and and, uh, <laughs> and and show a little bit more. And actually, I think yeah, um, I have a I have a a very small and uh, not uh, not often updated YouTube channel where where I actually show a little bit. Yeah, I do. I have mm. a a small some an unfinished work process. Um, a video there and also uh one paint one one video where i'm exploring the cons the like uh, composition ideas uh with a like uh, the golden ratio and stuff uh, mm. by by uh showing how i work in in a 3d program yeah that is so interesting mm. hey I, we're coming up on our yeah five minutes at the end of this but i think i'm not sure how long we've gone but this has been like an, an incredible interview i just want to thank you so much for for coming on here and sharing this stuff you know especially <laughs> since we just sent you a cold message you know so yeah. i appreciate you yeah no i appreciate it and uh, it was my pleasure yeah thank you so much um what was i about to say i hate that we have a time limit it's yeah, it's, yeah we yeah, we're yeah. not from we're we do a lot of this stuff as like field recordings or like mm. on the phone or yeah. something so yeah. we're unfamiliar with our technology right now but <laughs> yeah but regardless, like this has been like at like it's just like I I because like I'm probably too old to to do it, but I do play Minecraft maybe a little <laughs> yeah. too much. So I'm gonna think of you in this conversation. Yeah, whenever thank I you. See, yeah, when I'm when I'm building a little village and I hang up my, the, the paintings in their houses. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think of of your work and your experience. So I I hope we can uh we can stay in touch and uh and keep yeah, up yeah, with all of yeah. your uh your accomplishments and the shows you got coming up so but thank yeah. you so much for 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 blessing our show yeah we you know with your thank experience you and your story really nice talking to you yeah you too man well uh we'll we'll uh keep you updated on when this is going to come out and yep. in the meantime i hope you have a good rest of your night and good rest of your week mm. you too you too wonderful we'll talk soon yeah thank you All bye right. bye 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 <laughs> Boston Art Podcast is an independent DIY production by Brian Huntress and Theodora Earthworms. The information contained in this episode represents the views and opinions of the original creators or our guests, and does not represent any institution, organization, or business. 
Find us on Instagram at Boston Art Podcast and tune in for a new episode every Friday. Thank you for listening.